What do you do when you want to get away from the city's hustle and bustle and spend some time in tranquility and solitude? You raise your eyes to the starry sky. While the space above Earth may appear to be a serene place with a mellow vibe, this is actually not the case. There are several cosmic activities taking place in the cosmos at any given time. The countless stars in your night sky is one such example. The cosmos is so highly populated with stars that you'll never be able to count them all in your lifetime. In fact, the universe contains more stars than there are sand grains on Earth. Isn't that mind-boggling? According to present estimates, there are about 200 billion trillion stars in the entire universe, or two, followed by 23 zeros. That's an astronomically huge number. According to NASA, a star is an astronomical object comprising a luminous spheroid of plasma held together by its gravity. As the most essential components of galaxies, stars are the most well-known astronomical objects. A galaxy's history, dynamics, and development may be traced by the age, distribution, and composition of its stars. Additionally, stars produce and distribute heavy elements like carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. And their features are closely related to those of any planetary systems that may form around them. As a result, the core of astronomy is the study of the birth, evolution, and demise of stars. And scientists want to study just exactly that. With new highly advanced and expensive telescopes at their disposal, NASA scientists believe that they can finally see the birth of a star for the first time. What are the scientists really going to see? How will the discovery affect you? Join us as we prepare to see the star birth in high definition. To appreciate the new endeavor undertaken by the James Webb Telescope, it's necessary to know a few stellar facts. Stars are always up there when we look at the sky in the night. But did you know that stars come in all shapes and sizes? The Sun, which is the nearest star to us, is a typical main sequence star. But stars can grow to be incredibly large. For instance, the red hypergiant star, Stevenson 218, which is about 19,570 light years away, is so enormous that it can engulf every planet that revolves around the Sun inside the orbit of Jupiter. But being the big boss of the universe comes at a price. Scientists generally agree that the larger the star, the shorter its life. How are stars formed? Stars are born within the clouds of dust and are scattered throughout most galaxies. The Orion Nebula is a well-known example of a dust cloud of this type. Deep inside these clouds, turbulence forms knots that are sufficiently massive for the gas and dust to begin collapsing due to their own gravitational pull. The material at the cloud's core starts to heat up as it breaks apart. This heated core at the center of the collapsing cloud is referred to as a protostar that will one day eventually turn into a star. Not every ingredient is used entirely to create the star. The leftover dust has the potential to form planets, asteroids, comets, or it may just remain as dust. An amateur astronomer, James McNeil, saw a tiny nebula in the constellation of Orion in January 2004. It had suddenly emerged close to Messier 78 when observers from all around the world focused their telescopes on McNeil's nebula. They discovered something intriguing. It seems that its brightness fluctuates. According to observations made with NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory, the young star's magnetic field interacts with the surrounding gas to produce the episodic brightness rises. What are nebula? An enormous cloud of gas and dust in space is known as a nebula. 
Some nebula are created by the gas and dust left over after a dead star explodes, such as a supernova. Other nebula are areas where new stars are beginning to form. Some nebula are referred to as star nurseries for this reason. The nebula are made up of dust and gases, primarily hydrogen and helium. Although the dust and gases in a nebula are widely dispersed, gravity can start to gradually gather some of the dust and gas clumps. These clusters' gravitational pull increases as they become larger and larger. The mass of gas and dust eventually grows so large that it is forced to collapse by gravity. The material in the cloud's core heats up as a result of the collapse, and this hot core is the beginning of a star. The Helix Nebula is the nebula that is known to be the nearest to Earth. It is the charred remains of a dying star, maybe one similar to the Sun. It's around 700 light-years distant from Earth. That means that it would still take 700 years for you to arrive there, even if you could travel at the speed of light. Because of this, astronomers utilize extremely powerful telescopes to capture images of distant nebula. Several stunning images of distant nebula have been taken by several space observatories, including NASA's Hubble and Spitzer Space Telescope. They will, however, fall significantly behind the competition with the disposal of the newest, finest, and largest space observatory ever, the James Webb Space Telescope. How will the JWST capture images of the star birth? The $10 billion Space Telescope is the biggest and the most complex space telescope ever built. While the Hubble telescope collects images in mostly visible light, James Webb will mostly take pictures in infrared, revealing more detail about the objects in those images unlike ever before. Scientists are hoping that the newly launched space observatory will help them unravel the mysteries that have long lurked in the icy depths of space. With the first color images of the telescope finally released, soon, NASA's newest Deep Space Observatory will direct its attention to an area that is relatively close by and teeming with newborn stars. The next JWST mission will focus on a program of early science, which will include an exploration of the Trapezium Cluster, a star nursery located 1,350 light-years from Earth in the Orion Nebula. According to Webb Consortium representatives, the cluster has roughly 1,000 newborn stars crammed into a region that is about four light-years wide and is surrounded by gas and dust. The stars are also extremely young, only a million years old compared to the Sun, which is 4.5 billion years old. The study will then be separated into three sections in order to streamline this complex project. The first will include watching for young objects, such as free-floating planets that are not in any orbit around a star, and brown dwarfs, bodies that are too huge to be categorized as planets, but too tiny to initiate nuclear fusion in their course. These kinds of puzzling objects may provide more hints as to how planets develop, whether independently or as part of a star formation. The second phase will examine the early stages of a planet formation by measuring exoplanets that may be developing in young star disks using Webb's infrared detectors. The researchers will learn about the makeup of the dust by comparing the Webb photos with the visible light photographs taken with the Hubble Space Telescope, which will help them comprehend the very early stages of planet formation. The third and final study focuses on young stars' jets and outflows which are essential to star formation. The Orion Nebula has both huge and tiny jets and outflows due to the presence of a vast number of young stars there. The web will be used by the researchers to analyze the outflow's fine structures, quantify their speeds, and evaluate the cumulative impact they have on the star-forming clouds in the area. Webb is ideal for these investigations because it picks up infrared light, which is effectively heat released by the objects being studied. This allows the telescope to see through dust and even pick up things that are not extremely hot. Moreover, because the telescope is in deep space, it is not affected by the Earth's atmosphere, which interferes with infrared observations. 
science is a field where excitement knows no boundaries. The dynamics of the trapezium and stellar nurseries in general have the scientists incredibly curious, and they eagerly anticipate Webb's help in presenting fresh perspectives on these regions of starbirth. What are your thoughts about it? How will the JWST affect the course of humanity in your opinion? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. I hope you really liked it. Consider subscribing to the channel if you liked the video. And as always, thanks for watching.